What's going on guys, my name is Nick and today's video is actually a tutorial video on how to record a live commentary session or a let's play uh, using a Mac. So Mac being a MacBook, a MacBook Pro, an iMac and if you can afford it, a Mac Pro. So uh, I've been using Macintosh since I started my channel so I have no idea of all the PC software so sorry about that. If you ask me PC questions I will have no idea. Alright, there are four main programs that we're going to be dealing with. The first two, QuickTime Player and Photo Booth, are the main programs you're going to be using for recording the live commentary. And the reason why I left Audacity out, which is a very popular program a lot of commentators use to record commentary, is that from what I hear, Audacity is not that reliable. It has a nasty habit of shutting down without letting the commentator know. And there's nothing worse than losing several hours of a gameplay or a let's play so the QuickTime player as well as photo booth are a lot more reliable and they're built into the system all recent macbooks and macbook pros have them as a default program so unlike audacity as well with audacity you kind of have to look for it download it and even pay for it whereas the other two are free uh, the next two programs itv is your default program for uh, actually recording your gameplay. There are only two programs available for Macintoshes right now to record gameplay, ITV and another one, I forget what its name is called, but hands down from what I hear, ITV is the best one, so if you are a commentator, 100% go with ITV. And the final one is your video editing software, which is either Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Express. Personally, myself, I use Final Cut Pro, but it can be used, e either one can be used. Moving into hardware, at this point if you're trying to record a live commentary session, I can only assume that you have some sort of capture card, either HD PVR from Hopog, a Blackmagic Intensity Pro, or even uh, Dazzle at this point. Uh, so I'm not going to go into capture cards, So, but what I do recommend for you guys is that you get an external USB mic, preferably a condenser one. The most popular mics in this YouTube community as of right now are either the Blue Snowball, the Audio-Technica AT2020, or the Blue Yeti. Once again, this is pretty much what everyone uses in this community. And the reason why you want to go with an external mic is, first off, you don't want to be holding it because you, your, your, your hands are going to be full with the actual gameplay of you holding the controller. As well, you don't want to go with a built-in mic in your MacBook or your MacBook Pro, uh, just because it doesn't give you any, it doesn't give you really good quality as, as opposed to a condenser mic. And these mics usually range around from $100 to $150 so it's kind of an investment right there but uh, any commentator uh, can tell you that having a good mic is a good foundation for making sure that you have some uh, good production quality in all your videos. There's nothing more annoying than listening to a commentator and struggling to hear what he's trying to say as well as hearing popping noises in the background just because his mic's really bad. And I myself, I actually own a Blue Snowball and even though the Blue Snowball has a built-in pop filter in it just because it's a condenser mic, I still have an external pop filter that goes over the microphone just to uh, clear out some ambient noise as well. So um, the pop filter may not be necessary, but once again, I highly suggest that you guys go with a condenser mic. It's a uh, commentary, uh, so being able to understand what the commentator is saying and listening to it clearly is a big deal in my opinion for production quality wise. So make sure that you get a good mic. And just a heads up, if you want more information on the hardware or the software, I provided links in the description box to the respective companies that you can kind of do your research from there. Alright, so now that we got the software and the hardware out of the way, let's move into the actual process of recording. So first off, plugging in your USB mic. Mine's already plugged in because I'm recording this as of right now. But if you want to double check to make sure that your mic's working properly, hit go into your system preferences, go into sound, and as you can see your mic should show up. Blow snow, snowball USB, getting some nice sound levels right there. And the thing is, when you plug in your USB mic, it should automatically override your internal microphone in your laptops. So this way you don't have to worry about fumbling around with all the settings and everything. It should be automatically set for your USB mic. So let's close this, open up ITV, which is once again our main software for recording the actual gameplay. And this is streaming directly live from my Xbox 360. Uh, this the Hopog works for the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and the Nintendo Wii, so long as you have component cables. 
as well. It has the amazing thing is also that you can record you can record in standard definition. It has standard definition slots in the front of it. So if you want to go a little bit retro, your SNES, your N64, your Sega Genesis, uh, you have the option for that as well, which is pretty sweet. All right, so that, there's our gameplay. Let's move into the audio recording. So hit QuickTime Player, File, New Audio Recording. A little box will pop up, and once again, as you can see, we're getting some nice audio levels right there. So first, hit record on your on your gameplay or the ITV, which is the big red button. So there you go, and then hit record on the actual audio recording for the QuickTime player. And the only difference from recording from the QuickTime player and the photo booth is that photo booth can be really used if you want to do such as a live video commentary a la like a CNNers kind of thing or if you want to do like a vlog kind of thing with uh, commentary in the background. But all else, if you just want the audio for the gameplay, then just go with QuickTime. It saves you from splicing the video from it a little bit later. But if you're not 100% sure, record in photo booth and once again, like I said, you can just cut the video from the audio a little bit later. Cool, so now let's stop both of these. Gonna hit stop record on this one, and then stop record on this one. And important note here is that the audio has not saved yet. You have to save it. So first you have to go into QuickTime file, then go save as. Then we're gonna call this live com, live com audio. It should go directly to your desktop. Actually, I'm gonna put it on my desktop so I have a quicker access to it. By default, it'll go into movies, but I'm gonna put it on my desktop. Okay, that's gonna go there. All right, now let's export our video. So now we're gonna go to export, right click here, export on the video that we recorded. We're gonna call this live com video. And important thing is I'm gonna export this as a H.264. This is not my normal export settings. It's just the fastest one. With .h264, it would be great, but what happens is when you export it, sometimes you get these weird green flashes that come up on your screen so that doesn't really make good for quality in my opinion so I'll post another video a day a video another day with my exact render settings but uh, for the time's sake I'm just gonna use that one like I said because it is the fastest all right so we're gonna import livecom audio and then import livecom video and now it's just a matter of placing them over top of each other and matching the audio. Place that there. When this comes up uh, to change the sequ uh, sequence settings, select no. There we go. Then we're going to select live com audio if it decides to pop up. <clears throat> I don't know what's going on right now. Yeah, I had a little hiccup right there for some reason. Livecom audio, drag that directly underneath that one. There we go, and there we go. As you can see, that green flash shows up. Once again, if I was using my re regular export settings, that will not work. That would not happen. And we're just going to cut off the excess right here, hitting B, and then that'll bring up our blade tool, hitting A to deselect the blade tool, then deleting that extra excess right there. And what you first want to do is you're going to want to modify the levels of the actual gameplay because you want to be able to hear yourself. So you're going to drop, I drop it down by usually around 21 decibels and that's pretty good by itself. I'm not going to render this out because that'll take a while and make the video excessively longer. But at this point, it's just a matter of ma syncing the audio to the gameplay if it's not 100% synced and then just exporting it at a final cut and it'll be ready for upload. Uh, one tip I can give you if you want to uh, sync up the audio is go a little, click this little portion right here to get a little bit deeper into the timeline. And first off, find the area that you want to sync up hit the M button which will create a marker on the timeline of that specific file and then get to whatever position you want to be on the audio portion and once again hit M to wherever you like it to be and then just a matter of dragging them up to match and there you go everything is nice and synced up those two those sets of red markers will uh, automatically snap to each other so yeah, that is how you do a live commentary session using a Macintosh once again. Uh, it's a cheaper way without having to run the unreliable Audacity. And it gives you options if you want to do it without video, such as with QuickTime Player, or with video using Photo Booth. 
So yeah, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this video has been somewhat informative and helpful. If it has, all I ask is that you guys just give the video a like rating. It just helps me out a lot. And if you like these kind of things and you want to, and you like watching gameplay, I also post video game commentary and gameplay, uh, mainly surrounding Call of Duty, but I also do a variety of other gameplays as well. So yeah, thank you guys for watching, and hopefully I will see you very soon.